worship that you felt welcome and that you certainly will feel. At this time, I'd like, like you just to stand where you are, welcome someone. Tell them that you're here today.
you please stand as we sing together in the recording page one? It's a beautiful call to worship by Cindy and Gailene. We sing together, the Savior like the shepherd.
go, bleh, 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 and bleh. Yes. 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 Well, goats are different than sheep, though, right? Yeah, they kind of make that. We're okay, right? We're keep okay. Now, we're, you know who takes care of sheep? Somebody called what? A shepherd. A shepherd, that's right. Shepherds take care of sheep. Now, there probably aren't too many shepherds left in the world anymore. There are shepherds out west where they have plenty of sheep, and they have shepherds in Australia and in the Middle East where they have lots and lots of sheep. There aren't too many left anymore now, but back in the time of Jesus, there were plenty of shepherds. And in the Bible, you would read plenty of stories about shepherds. Because the idea of those stories was not only to tell us what shepherds did, but to tell us what Jesus does. Now you've heard, and you heard in that, in that 23rd Psalm, it began, the Lord is my shepherd. And we're kind of like sheep. And Jesus is our shepherd. Did you ever think about it that way? Now we have to talk about what do shepherds do? Do you know what shepherds do? Yeah. Elizabeth will try it. That's right. Shepherds take care of the sheep. They tend the sheep. They herd the sheep. And they protect the sheep. Isn't that right, Aunt Jen? When we say that shepherds herd the sheep, we mean that they gather them together in groups. Now, we gather someplace every Sunday. Where do we gather together because of Jesus? We come to church. We come to church to hear about God, to learn about God. Shepherds also have an important job of tending the sheep. And tending means that they take care of them. They feed them. They make sure that they're clean and they have uh, take care of them when they're sick. Jesus doesn't come and give us lunch or dinner, but he does feed our minds and fill our hearts with love. And then finally, shepherds have to the very important job of protecting their flocks. And just like a real shepherd who try to keep his flocks and sheep safe from danger, Jesus watches over us and keeps us safe from harm. So you see why we read in the Bible, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. Shall we say our prayer together? Fold your hands and repeat after your name. Big outside voices. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for hurting.
May we be reminded, though, that in the best of ways, dear Jesus, you are our shepherd. That when we are true to who we are, and that means at times that we wander off the path, instead of being true to who you are in us, that we need you to guide us and lead us back. We're grateful that you protect us and you care for us and that you are always present with us. So remind us to God today that as Christ is a resurrected Christ and you call us to be an Easter people, may we embrace again that reality that Christ is with us in our places of work, even at our school, on the playgrounds, in our homes, wherever we are as your children, you are with us. Even perhaps at times in unlikely places, such as a hospital waiting room, or in the eyes of the homeless, or teenagers struggling, struggling for a sense of identity. The list goes on and on. You are here for us, but you are also here to live with us. Loving God, we ask as we lift persons up today, persons that are hurting and in need of your presence, persons who perhaps are dealing with difficult decisions or uncertainty, we lift these persons to you today. We lift up students and teachers this week and ask that they have a sense of calm that is beyond their understanding to focus on that which really matters, which is each child in their life and their fullness. Help us, loving God, as your people to not hesitate to call out to you. So we ask, loving God, in these moments of silence that you will lead us to pray for one another, to pray for ourselves and our families and loved ones who perhaps are in distant lands. But in all of these things, may we know that you continue to lead us as a loving shepherd who cares, who gives, and who guides. Hear us in these moments of silence as only we know you can and we pray. Loving God, in the midst of our everyday lives, even as we are struggling, remind us of your peace that goes beyond understanding. And make us instruments of your peace that we may give hope to the hopeless, strength to those who are faltering, love to the lonely, consolation to the grieving, and faith to the faithless. Teach us, loving God, to live out our lives in such a way that others will be drawn to you, but especially be with those today who need to feel your presence and your love in a way that they perhaps have not felt in some time. As we lift them up to you, we give thanks as we honor the risen Christ. Amen. <coughs> I invite you to please turn to hymn number 393. Spirit of the living God, would you stand as we sing this voice?
Deep Bar, what a beautiful reminder to us of the fact that God watches us and is here for us in all things. Our scripture lessons this morning come from both the Gospel of John and the Book of Acts, and also 1 Peter. And we have shared the first of the lectionary readings in the 23rd Psalm of the day. We're contacting them all four of the suggested readings for today as we deal with that question of who are you following? And we begin by turning and reading John 10, verses 25 to 30. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Then the book of Acts, as we continue to reflect upon the early Christian gathering of churches and homes, we find that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles, and all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need, and every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 25, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. And when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. It is said one of the strategies in World War II in Europe was that one of the ways that they, as a country, as nations there in Europe, decided to fight against Hitler was to make a law that all of the street signs, town time, all the signs were to be taken down. The purpose of this was that they knew that Germans, the, German, the Germans had maps of the area, but they also recognized that unless they could figure out where they were, they couldn't figure out where to go. Today, as we consider the question, who are you following? Surely one of the first things that we want to admit as we talk about who we want to follow is that we want to know, follow someone who knows where they are and knows where they're going. Now, some of you may think I'm exaggerating when I say I'm extremely directionally challenged. If you doubt that, that means you've never traveled with me or ever gone with me anywhere. Casey could tell you early in life she talked about the turnaround turns when she would talk about going to places with me because it's true, I just have a hard time. And even if I've been in a place and I haven't been there many times, I have to kind of relearn it. But one of the things that continues to cause me to hyperventilate, even with GPS, is when you see a detour sign and they take you off the path and take you out. And, and they do a little bit better job of that now, God and you, DOT, I thank you for that. But, as, um, but occasionally, when there's that spontaneous detour, I'm one of those people that just say, okay, that car there looks like it might know where it's going. <laughs> I'll follow it. I know I'm probably the only person that has actually almost followed somebody right up into their driveway. Have you ever had that experience? <laughs> 
Because there's something about being in a place and just not knowing. And so you just kind of want to, well, let's just follow somebody who looks like they know where they're going. It's one thing to do that out on the road in an automobile, but isn't it true, dear friends, that sometimes in life we may find ourselves in a place where we're not sure exactly where we are, much less where we're going, and we want to follow the right person because we want to end up at the right destination. But sometimes we wonder who that person is. Surely today in this place we know, well, of course, Linda, we've been talking about Jesus as being our shepherd. We, we talked about that aspect of Psalm 23, about the Lord is our shepherd. Even as we said those familiar words, we were reminded that, that we have a God who's alive and guiding, a God who leads us beside the still waters, who leads us in paths of righteousness for His namesakes, and at times pushes us down into the green grass so that we can be reminded of the coolness and the presence of a living God. We know that. In this place, as we hear the scripture, we're reminded about those early Christians, about when they gathered together, they reminded each other about who they were, and they reminded each other that the reason that they were there was because Christ is alive. And, and they experienced that day in and day out as they ate together and prayed together and helped each other. And surely that's our prayer as a church, as the body of Christ here, is that we will also be about following Christ. And then in 1 Peter we find that reminder to us though that if we are indeed sincere, if we are indeed open to following Christ, wherever Christ would lead us, we need to know that at times it's going to be difficult. At times it's going to feel like it's unfair because we experience hardship and, and sometimes misunderstanding and sometimes even, even struggling and suffering. Even in the midst of that, though, as we're reminded about how Jesus, when, even though he was hurt, he never retaliated. And when we hear that, we think, hmm, I'm not so sure I can follow quite that closely with this one. Today, for just a few moments, but let us be reminded about how important it is to ask that question, who are you following? Who am I following? Because at times in our lives when we need to have that awareness of Following, we need to be clear about who is leading and where, and whether or not this person has our best interest at heart, and whether or not this person is leading us just here in this world, but leading us through this world, through the valley of the shadow of death, into a place of righteousness, right living, right relationships, forever and evermore. I reminded of a story told of a young woman who was filling out college applications, and on one of her college applications, it asked the question, are you a leader? And being both honest and conscientious, she wrote, no, and returned the application. She, of course, felt like that she would never hear from that college again, she said, because, but, you know, I was honest, but she was surprised one day to actually receive a letter from the college, and the letter started like this, dear applicant, a study of the application forms reveals that this year our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it is imperative that they have at least one follower. <laughs> you see, there are times in our lives when, when we need to understand and embrace the fact that in the moment that we are, we may not be able to lead, we may need to follow. And many times when we are our best in leading, is it not when we are as a leader following a greater leader? Isn't it true that when friends come to us and, and ask our help and our assistance, that when we are our best, it's not when we point to our past and our experience and our advice, but instead we point them to the shepherd that knows all, loves all, is all, and will be with all? Isn't it true, dear friends, that as we seek to follow, we pray that the people around us will not see us, but see the Christ in us. But we realize there are times in our lives when that's difficult because there are times when we're struggling even to figure out where we are, much less where we're going. 
But the message of this day, the message of Scripture, quite frankly, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, is that in our seeking, in our sheepness, if you will, the shepherd is there for us. The shepherd is there to guide us one step at a time, to provide for us, to protect us, to lead us. And surely it's that shepherd that we long to follow. It seems at times that when we think about various people in our lives, we, we look for those who are following the one who is and will always be. The one who is following Christ is a one that we say, yes, I'll follow him or her as long as he or she keeps their eyes on Christ. And isn't it true as a body of Christ that as we send the message out into this community and back into our homes and into our schools that we pray that we want people to say we reveal United Methodist Church is a group of people who are following the living Christ, who are struggling to live out faithful lives and faithful ways so that others can see Christ's hand and Christ's heart. Isn't it true, dear friends, as we look at ourselves and our own lives that we pray that it will be clear to the people around us who we are following? Philip Keller, in a book called The Shepherd, looks at Psalms 23. He reflects upon the many people that have come in and out of his life. He talks about people who are wealthy and people who are not wealthy. And he talks about people and he says that one of the things that he has come to see that in a person's life it's the boss, the, man, the manager, or the master in people's lives who make the difference in their destiny and also in how they reach their destiny. He goes on to say that he's encountered people on all economic realms, but when he thinks back on it, that it's the people who have struggled and who have hurt and who have experienced life sometimes at its worst, but who have kept their eye and followed Christ that have touched his life in the greatest way. Surely that's true of most of us as we reflect upon people in our lives, and is it true that we want that for ourselves? As I was reading about 1 Peter and about how it lifts up that image of Jesus, our shepherd, being one who is a servant, who serves, but also one who's willing to sacrifice. And as we think about Jesus in those terms, that we are reminded that we are called to someone beyond our understanding and beyond our grasp, but one who can lead us and one who can guide us. But there in 1 Peter, we're reminded that at times there's hurt and life is not fair. I have read this one sentence that said simply this, Life is not fair, but God is fair. I probably could preach a sermon on just that one sentence, couldn't I? But I know, having a teenage daughter, and many of you remember growing up, how many times did you, as a teenager, at various ages, and even at my age, sometimes just say, that's just not fair. But life was not fair for Christ, dear friends, and it's not going to be fair to us, even when we have our eyes on the show. But we know the one who leads us knows us and knows how tough it can be that is the very one who walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death, of darkness, and despair to the other side. Who are you following? Is it clear to you? Is it clear to the world? Let's pray. Dear loving God, guide us to wisely and boldly claim again that you are our shepherd. Dear Jesus, remind us, encourage us with the knowledge that you do know what it's like to live here in this world. The distractions may be different today, but there are still distractions. The voices may be different today, 
but the voices that cause us to focus on anything other than you have a way of confusing us to the point we may not even know who we are, much less where we are going. Especially for those of us today who may be confused or troubled, may they most of all feel your presence to Jesus. May they feel your shepherd heart, your caring heart, your embracing, protecting heart. May they feel that presence in a way that they can know without a doubt that nothing can separate them from you. <coughs> May they feel your arm around them even today. And for those of us, dear God, who perhaps have become a little too comfortable in our own leadership, challenge us, most of all, to claim you again as our true leader. And may we humbly and yet boldly say yes, it's time to follow as you lead we pray. Amen. I invite you, if you will, to turn to him number 338, where he lives
remind us that even as you daily provide for us all that we need, that you continue to lead us, that you are not a distant God, but a very present God. And dear God, help us to see you in ways perhaps that we have not before so that we can claim again that you indeed are our Lord and our shepherd, that you are our guide, and may we follow. Continue to help us even today as we continue to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please turn to hymn number 452, and may we sing together, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
that we are. Surely that is a God we desire to follow. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the connection of the Holy Spirit go with us as God's children, following the presence of the living Christ where we go. Amen. Thank you.